Hello viewers and welcome to Noble Tech. In today's video we'll be taking a look at RFID and NFC. Today we're diving into RFID and NFC, how they work, how they're used, and how you can experiment with them using some seriously cool tools from Midwest Gadgets. I will also be taking a look at the Chameleon Ultra and the Kizu V4B with Tron's beautiful Kizu case. Whether you're into red teaming, hardware hacking, or just curious about wireless tech, this episode is packed with insights and hands-on gear reviews. Let's get started. In this video, we're exploring RFID and NFC, two wireless communication technologies that power everything from contactless payments to access control systems. So what is RFID? RFID stands for Radio Frequency Identification. It's a system that uses radio waves to identify and track objects. An RFID setup typically includes a tag, also called a transponder, which contains a microchip and antenna, reader, which emits radio waves and receives data from the tag, and a back-end system which processes the data. RFID tags come in two types, passive, which means no battery, and it's powered by the reader's electromagnetic field, and active, which contains a battery, longer range, and higher data rates. And I just want to point out that this tag is for demonstration purposes. I'm not actually sure if it's RFID or NFC. I just picked it up out of a box. RFID operates across three frequency bands. We have low frequency, which is 125 kilohertz. This is good for short range, good penetration through metal and water, and it's used in animal tracking and legacy access cards. We also have high frequency, which is 13.56 megahertz. This has a moderate range, can be used in smart cards, library systems, and NFC. And we also have ultra high frequency, which is 860 to 960 megahertz. This has a long range, faster data transfer, and used in logistics and retail. So what is NFC? NFC, or Near Field Communication, is a subset of high frequency RFID. It operates at 13.56 megahertz, but only within a few centimeters. Unlike RFID, NFC supports two-way communication, allowing devices to exchange data securely. NFC has three modes. A reader-writer mode, a device reads or writes to a passive NFC tag. We also have peer-to-peer -peer mode, which two devices exchange data directly. And we also have card emulation mode. A device acts like a contactless card. NFC is ideal for mobile payments, such as Apple Pay and Google Pay, smart posters and stickers, secure access systems, and device pairing and data exchange. It's energy efficient, secure due to its short range, and widely supported by smartphones and embedded systems. It's energy efficient, secure to a point due to its short range, and widely supported by smartphones and embedded systems. So what are the security implications for RFID and NFC? RFID and NFC are convenient, but they're also vulnerable. Common attack vectors include skimming, reading data from a tag without permission, cloning, copying a tag's ID and emulating it, and relay attacks, extending the range between tag and reader to spoof proximity. That's why tools like Flipper Zero, Proxmark Free, and Chameleon Ultra are popular among ethical hackers. They help test and secure these systems. The Chameleon Ultra is a powerful RFID and NFC emulator that supports ISO 144443A-B and can mimic multiple tag types. Apologies there for that long code. It's great for capturing and replaying NFC card data, testing access control systems, and emulating MyFair cards with other HF protocols. It supports USB-C, it has a clean web interface, it has a pretty good phone app, and it works well with the LilyGo TMBED CC1101. So what are the pros and cons? The Chameleon Ultra is versatile, portable, and has open source firmware. The cons are there are no official support, and it has limited documentation. But limited documentation aside, the Chameleon Ultra is very easy to use. To download the app for the Chameleon Ultra, just go onto the Play Store or the iPhone Store and search Chameleon Ultra. The app name once downloaded is something like C-U-G-U-I. To connect your Chameleon Ultra to your phone, you click to turn it on, and then hit refresh immediately. And here we have the device show up. We click on it. And now we are connected to the Chameleon Ultra. In the slot manager, you can see that we have eight different slots to choose from. And in each slot, you can have RFID and NFC. We also have a library where you'll find all your saved cards and your dictionaries. We also have the read card option where you have the option to scan high frequency tags and cards and low frequency tags and cards. 
We also have a write card section where you can use the Chameleon Ultra to write to particular cards and tags. We also have a tool section where you can download your dictionaries. Then we have a setting section. So to demonstrate the Chameleon Ultra, I'll put the Chameleon Ultra on this card here. And I'll select continuous scan. And you can see we have scanned the high frequency card. In this case, it's a MyFair Classic 1K. And if we scroll down, we can see that we have the option to read again, continuous scan or save only UID. As you can see down here, I don't believe there are any keys on this card to decrypt. Next up, we're going to look at the 13.56 MHz field detector by Midwest Gadgets. The 13.56 MHz field detector is a pocket sized tool that lights up when it detects a 13.56 MHz field. It's perfect for locating reader hotspots, verifying antenna strength and debugging Flipper Zero or Chameleon setups. It's simple, reliable and great for field work or quick lab tests. And just to point out that the scanner itself is just this little black disc here, not the whole card. The card is just for presentation. So to demonstrate the field detector, we go onto our flipper zero and we go over to NFC. And we click on read. Now if I turn this over and I take the detector to the back of the flipper zero, you can see here that it's flashing in correspondence with the reader emitting a radio frequency. Now this tells us that the hotspot on the flipper zero is in this location, as when you go far enough away, it stops lighting up. This is the same for on top and underneath. Next up, we're going to look at Midwest Gadget's Flipper Zero Field Enhancer. The Field Enhancer boosts the Flipper Zero's 13.56 MHz signal range. It's a passive coil that wraps around the NFC antenna and helps improve read and write distance, stabilize communication with stubborn tags, and enhance spoofing reliability. It's plug and play and works well with cloned cards and emulation tests. The Flipper Zero Field Enhancer is plug and play in that it's very simple to use. To install the Flipper Zero Field Enhancer, you simply need to peel off the back label, place it onto the Flipper Zero. It's as simple as that. We also have the Midwest Gadgets Flipper Zero Field Extender that improves signal clarity and reduces noise. It's ideal for crowded RF environments, metal surfaces, and precision testing. Combine it with the field detector for a full diagnostic setup. So much like the Flipper Zero Field Enhancer, the field extender that works by sticking onto the back of your Flipper Zero. But the difference here, you can see that the board is firm and we have an SMA connector here. So what happens is you stick it onto the back of your Flipper Zero, like so. You then connect the cable to the board through the connector. And then on the other end, we have a passive coil in what looks like a typical access card. So we connect the cable to this. Once connected, we have the full system. So one example of what you can do with this is that you can stick this to the back of your flipper zero. And if the cable was long enough, you could run this cable down the length of your sleeve. And you can have this card in your hand connected to your flipper zero, which is safely and discreetly tucked in your pocket. This would be fantastic for pen testing and red teaming purposes. But please remember only to use devices like this if you have permission to do so. Without permission, you may be breaking the law. The Flipper Zero Field Extender was released at DEF CON 33 in August of 2025. It is similar to the Flipper Field Enhancer, but it is thicker and adds an IPEX connection to the device. So when this IPEX cable is not connected, it will act just like the Field Enhancer, improving and saturating the 13.56 MHz signal that exists. So sticking the field extender connected to an IPEX slash UFA cable that can connect it to an included 27 millimeter antenna with any size male to male IPEX cable. Uh, this particular one is 15 centimeters. The field extender allows your flipper zero to be controlled from your pocket using the flipper app. You can use the included cable to easily grab credentials from cards, fobs, and even emulate devices using the remote antenna without taking the flipper from your pocket. Next up, we'll take a look at Midwest Gadget's smallest Flex 13.56 MHz repeater version 3. The Flex repeater version 3 captures and replays 13.56 MHz signals with minimal latency. The use case is extending range between tag and reader, bypassing physical barriers, and testing relay attacks in controlled environments. It's compact, stealthy, and surprisingly powerful. 
Now this will act much like the field enhancer for the Flipper Zero, but you can stick it on more things because it's a small, tiny little sticker. For example, you could still stick it on the back of a Flipper Zero, or you could stick it to a LilyGo T-Embed CC101, or you could stick it on the back here of the Kizu V4B. And lastly, from Midwest Gadgets, the Midwest Gadgets logo sticker with NFC. This logo sticker includes a programmable NFC tag. You can store URLs, V cards, and payloads. It works with the Flipper Zero, Android, iOS, and a multitude of other NFC readers. Taking a quick look at Midwest Gadgets website, if we go into Flipper Zero accessories, we can see here the Flipper Zero Field Enhancer and the Flipper Zero Field Extender. We also have some very interesting Kizu accessories coming very soon. We have RFID and NFC repeaters. Here we have the 13.56 MHz field detector. We also have the Proxmark Free Easy Field Enhancer to improve the Proxmark Free. We also have the Field Meter Pro, a repeater bundle, an RFID supporter bundle, some 13.56 MHz field meters, a large 13.56 MHz NFC repeater, and the smallest Flex 13.56 MHz repeater. We also have the DIY field generator, which I have and intend to make very soon. I'll make a video on that and the 13.56 MHz field generator. And we also have a digital 13.56 MHz field meter. I'm looking forward to making the DIY field generator. It's been a long time since I've soldered, but it looks like a very fun project. Midwest Gadgets also do NFC patches. They have stickers, and they have NFC stickers as well. They also sell a card antenna separately, a H-probe for VNA, and IPEX cables of various lengths. You can find Midwest Gadgets at midwestgadgets.org. Next up, I want to take another quick look at the Kisu V4B now that I have Tron's beautiful Kisu case on it. The Kisu V4B is a compact RF toolkit that supports sub-gigahertz, Bluetooth, NFC, infrared, and sensor logging. It's Flipper compatible, which means that it runs the Flipper Zero firmware or the Momentum firmware. But what really elevates the Kizu V4B is Tron's Kizu case, a beautifully designed enclosure that adds durability and style. The shattered glass edition in particular is a standout, turning your Kizu into a showpiece while keeping it protected. The case also comes in black and white, which to me looks a little bit like a Stormtrooper, and you can also get it in blue and orange. And I will be making another video very soon, which is a short installation guide of the Kizu case for the Kizu V4B. If you want to know more about the Kizu case by Tron's Cases, head on over to tronscases.com, which will link to his Tindy store, which currently has a sale on the Kizu case. I would also like to clarify that from my understanding that the Kizu case isn't subject to a great deal of tariffs, if any at all. It's only a £1.50 charge, which is on Tron rather than the buyer themselves. If you order the Kisu case from Tron and you're from the United States of America, you shouldn't be hit with any additional fees. So what are the real-world use cases of RFID and NFC? The practical applications include red team demos, so clone access cards, test spoofing, and simulate relay attacks. Maker projects, so NFC-triggered automation, smart posters, and secure logins. And also education, teach wireless protocols, security flaws, and ethical hacking. These tools are great for learning, testing, and building, but please always get permission before scanning or emulating real-world systems. So that was a shallow, deep dive into RFID and NFC. Plus, we took a look at some of the best tools for testing, spoofing, and extending 13.56 MHz signals. Whether you're building access control demos, exploring red team tactics, or just geeking out with the Flipper Zero, these accessories are worth checking out. Drop a comment if you want a deeper dive into any of these tools, or if you'd like a teardown or firmware walkthrough. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed it, subscribe, and hit that bell button if you want to see more. I've been Og, this has been Noble Tech. Stay curious, and until next time, take care.